Hi again. LinkedIn's core value proposition remains pretty much the same. It legitimises putting a CV online, keeping it up to date and putting your best foot forward for future job prospects for most people. That's fundamentally its core proposition. A lot of us use it for different purposes, but that's essentially it. But that therefore means that lots of people keep their profile really up to date, which makes it a great source for leads. So today I want to explore how to get leads from LinkedIn. Funnel Vision is brought to you by Math Marketing, creators of the Funnel Plan. Math Marketing is the source of the one, two, three of B2B. I've explored great advice from other bloggers, uh, including a couple of our own articles, and I've um, brought it down, I think, to these conclusions. Create a great profile and keep it up to date. Self-evident. Connect to everybody you know and no one that you don't know. Monitor movements and reach out to people who've moved, whether you know them or don't know them. We'll come back to that later. Commit to 20 minutes a day. Don't be afraid to start cold. Start an information sharing dialogue, not a pitch, and don't be afraid to climax. Stick around and I'll explain why. Well, as I said, I've got five uh, sources, plus one of our own, or actually two of our own, that I want to refer to today. And the first one is from Jeff Haddon, um, he's a contributing editor from Inc. Answer the question, what do you do in a 30 second intro video? Really what he's getting at is pimp your profile. Connect using people you know to broaden your network. I'm actually not so fond of that. I'll come back to that. Don't connect with people you don't actually know, and that's why. Third point I strongly agree with. Use LinkedIn to create leads by investigating people you may know. Yeah, but how? Asking common connections? Maybe, I've got a better idea for you. Monitor current clients and top prospects? Absolutely. Share an update daily? Good idea. Join groups? Eh, I'm not on groups anymore. Um, not so keen. Congratulate um, uh, anybody on what they're achieving? Yeah, maybe. Um, I actually do that, to be honest. Um, take the time to write a recommendation of clients. Uh, nice courtesy, if nothing else. And stop. What he's really getting there is do the 20 minutes, don't do three hours and then nothing. Next contribution is from HubSpot, uh, six ways to generate leads for business. Unfortunately, a lot of the this might be an old article because a lot of the recommendations don't hold anymore. Um, use LinkedIn answers, but that's no longer available. Um, uh, the applications function used, unfortunately, also no longer supported. Um, join groups outside of your industry. Perhaps use LinkedIn people to get industry names. Uh, consider using LinkedIn direct ads. Consider. Yeah, okay, I'm not sure. Um, when a trade shows, use the mobile app to increase your network. Well, that's just an efficiency for data entry because really the point is you're connecting with them. Um, so I, less there than normal. I quite like HubSpot. I just don't think there's a huge amount in that particular article or perhaps it's just been overtaken by changes in the technology. Next up, John Nemo, uh, author of LinkedIn Riches. Uh, clearly he knows something about the subject. Unfortunately, this article doesn't really do it. I suspect his book does, in fairness. Three ways to generate leads. Number one, join relevant industry groups. Number two, avoid the generic message um, providing a personal statement. That's about pimping your profile and avoid a hard sell. Definitely agree with the third point. Uh, Lewis Howes, uh, I've got 10 ways. Be specific, add websites, be creative, ask to connect, add contact info, answer questions, which is no longer a feature, discuss in groups, create an event, which is no longer uh, possible, introduce others and recommend others. Possibly, possibly. Um, the most shared article with, get this, 248 shares on LinkedIn, 41 on, excuse me, 248 on Facebook, 41 on LinkedIn, 178 on Twitter, four on Pinterest and 48 on Google+. Google Plus actually got up on this one, that's clever. Um, and the recommendations are, uh, well first is a point, two new members per second are joining up on LinkedIn. Yeah, that just says why, not how. Join groups and be active. Again, in a, in a moment I'm gonna draw a different conclusion. I'm not so keen on groups anymore. Explain who you are in simple terms. Yeah, of course, good idea, that's about pimping your profile. I also checked out one of my own prior blogs called How to Generate Leads Through LinkedIn, which is another video, and one that my partner Brett Bonser did entitled The Importance of a Good VBR. Let me synthesize all that for you, because I think it comes down to some pretty common sense advice, most of which I agree with, but I'm still gonna twist it. Let me give you first what I think that synthesizes too. 
pimp your profile and keep it up to date, connect to everyone you know and no one you don't know, monitor all movements, join relevant groups, spend a little time each day rather than three hours and then nothing, use the platform to engage with current and potential clients, show interest in a potential client rather than going for the hard sell. Now I actually agree with all of that. I've already argued I'm not so keen on groups anymore, um, but other than that I do agree with those recommendations. However, I think I can get more concrete for you in terms of distilling that to things that you actually should do and some concrete steps. Let me have a go at that now. Well, the first step clearly is to create a great profile and keep it great. That's evident. Uh, if people go and look at your profile and you look like a ninny, they'll switch off really quickly. Secondly, connect to everybody that you know. Why everybody? Because it, when they move roles, then if they know you and you have some kind of relationship with them, then that's a good time to reach out to them. So you really want to connect to everybody you know. But frankly, no one that you don't know. I get a reasonable number of connection requests every day and I just don't accept them unless I know the person. Why? Because when they move, I don't care, so why would I connect with them? And when people look at my profile and see who I'm connected with, I don't want to say that I'm connected to this person if I'm not really. So I try to make LinkedIn reflect my real world. Which gets us to the monitoring of movements. So basically anybody that I know when they move, I reach out and say, hey, congratulations on the new role, love to stay in touch, what are your details? I do that to keep my contact information up to date and just for a little soft touch. I'm definitely not trying to sell them anything. I'm not even selling them on a content journey because they're probably already on it. If we're connected, they're already getting my stuff on LinkedIn. If we're connected via email, they're probably also getting it either via the blog or the monthly wrap up that we send to people that we know well. So I just want to keep my contact database up to date and a touch base and say hi. I may well take it further if I think there's something that I can do with them, but I'll do that after saying hi. Equally though, people who I don't know, you definitely want to connect or at least monitor those. So if there are key roles in key accounts, and I'm using my hands to signify, I think there are two elements. Um, don't bother unless the account is one that you really care about, and don't bother unless the role is one you really care about. But for anybody, any key role in a key account, if somebody moves into that role who you don't know, you should still reach out to them. Hey, congratulations on the new role. We haven't met, but this is now explain your value proposition. And, and here's the point, it's at the end of my list here, but I'm gonna jump forward to it now. The dialogue that you're gonna start with that person is a content dialogue, not a pitch, clearly, okay? So it's not, hey, I've got some value for it. Uh, sorry, it actually is, I've got some value for it. It's not, hey, I wanna tell you something, it's got some great information on a topic that I think you're gonna find relevant to your new role. Let's connect and you'll find my content that way. Nice soft request. Um, definitely spend 20 minutes a day. Um, I'm not great at this. I am going to make it a habit um, this year. I'm going to work much harder at it. But definitely I love the idea of 20 minutes a day rather than three hours once a week or whatever it takes. In, uh, frequent, small touches, really good idea. All right, next three points kind of tie together. Don't be afraid to start cold. And by that I mean, if you don't know that person, don't be afraid to reach out. But I've already kind of described what that reach out looks like. You're in this role, in this company. I'm relevant to this role of this company for these reasons. Um, love to share some content with you that you might find useful. Not, I want to pitch you a product or a service. Okay. Make it a content journey. So you actually want to take them on a little bit of a journey. And um, you know, don't be afraid to build to a climax with that content journey. And what I'm saying there is that Certainly the first touch is going to be wholly informational and maybe allude to some value. The next one might allude a little more strongly to that value. Um, but the value is not going to be the service they offer, but something I want you to do. So I'm building up to this thing. Maybe the thing is subscribe to my blog. Maybe the thing is fill in this form and let's talk. I don't know what the, the final thing that you can actually achieve. A guy called James Tuckerman, g'day James, um, uses the term the ultimate online transaction probably a good expression. What's, the, what's the, the final best outcome that you can achieve online? Build up to that thing. So your content's building a crescendo to that point. Allude to it and then speak to it and then really sell it hard. But it's a journey and don't be afraid to reach a climax. Occasionally, when you do, they're not gonna be interested in moving forward and that's perfectly okay. Put them into your nurture program and keep recycling them. But don't be afraid to try for it as long as you build up progressively over several touches. 
Okay, that's it. That's my best advice on how to get leads from LinkedIn. I hope you found that useful. A request if I may. If you haven't already, let me start at the beginning. If you got a bit of value from this, then, and I hope you did, then you probably wanna know when the next tip's out. We do it once a week, so why don't you subscribe either on the blog, go to mathmarketing.com forward slash blog, or on YouTube if that's your preference, go to youtube.com forward slash mathmarketing. Either way, subscribe because then you'll be the first to hear about these tips that come out once a week. If you have already, second part request, share the love if you would. Um, if there's a colleague that you have that you think would get value from this, a colleague, a customer, or a supplier, a partner, who you think would get value from this, please pass it on either this blog or those links and invite them to subscribe also. That helps me to help you and to help more like you. I almost forgot. And the third thing is that if you've done all those things, thank you. Really, thank you. Can I help you more? Send me an email, and here's the email, funnelvision.mathmarketing.com. Send an email to that address um, and let me know topics that you'd like covered. I would love to cover a topic that you would find really useful. So let me know. Well, that's it for this week. Lots more coming next week. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing.